How do you process cheating? Hello, everyone. Welcome back to my podcast. My name is Brittany Simon. In today's podcast, we're going to explore the idea of how to process being cheated on. Now, I don't know what it's like to actually cheat as I've never cheated. I do know what it's like to be cheated on. But in particular, I'm also going to name the kinds of cheating situations you might find yourself in because it's not black and white, right? When I say cheating, I'm imagining a very specific thing. When you say cheating, you're imagining a very specific thing. So let's make sure we're at least on somewhat of the same page when we discuss what cheating is. For me, when I say cheating, I mean there's been an agreement that has been made between, let's say, two parties. Okay, when we go plus two, it's a little complicated. So between two parties, there's an agreement that's been made and somebody has betrayed the trust of that agreement. So two people have agreed that for us, we're monogamous and kissing other people is cheating. And then one of the parties goes and kisses somebody else and therefore cheats on the relationship and the person they're in the relationship with, right? So it's a breaking of trust. Cheating isn't just being physical or intimate with somebody else, right? You can do that in many, many ways. You can have a consensual open relationship in which you are having sex with people outside of your main person, and that's not cheating. Now, for some people, their belief around monogamy means that anything outside of your interaction with your main person, including porn, is cheating. I'm not that religious, but I know there are people who exist that way. So remember, depending on your bubble and what side of the internet you live on and where on the planet you live, you will encounter different people who view cheating very differently. So in order to answer the question of how do you process being cheated on, well, first you have to know what kind of category of being cheated on you fall into, right? Are you, let's bring out my notes here, young and just not ready? So many people write me and say, Brittany, when I was 16, I got cheated on. Brittany, when I was 15, I cheated. Brittany, when I was 12, 13, 14, and I'm sitting here thinking, oh gosh, (laughs) what was cheating like when you were a teenager, right? I wouldn't know because I, even though I, you know, held hands with boys and girls when I was a teenager, nobody was ever cheated on. And those relationships were plenty emotional 2006, seven emo style in their own right, right? Without the cheating needing to happen. But sure, people in my high school were cheating on each other. Now, when you're young, Obviously, I assume you're not going to marry your high school sweetheart. So in some ways, I might come from the belief that having a high school relationship is really um, an opportunity for gathering a tool more than your forever. I don't think most high school couples stand the test of time. So I'm a little bit more lenient on young people cheating because I know they're young and they don't know what they're doing. And cheating to somebody in high school could be he held hands with another girl to she slept with somebody who wasn't me. So it can go from oh, that was like, okay, silly and immature to, hey, that's pretty painful. And in high school, if you're having sex, like intercourse, you could run the risk of spreading STIs or getting someone pregnant. So again, every category I talk about today, remember there's like a spectrum of eh to really bad. And I think the best way to digest what category you're in and to figure it out is to understand that being a human means it's complicated and nuanced and layered. And a part of being human means that somebody will cheat on you or could cheat on you or somebody in your life has cheated. So I think accepting that like, yeah, people are going to cheat, but not all people is really important. So it's not the end of the world if someone cheats on you, but it can be the end of this moment in time. It can feel like the world is ending around me. It can feel like my heart's been taken out and smashed or that my limb is being cut from me. Cheating can be malicious and cruel and horrible. Or for some people, it can just be a normal weekend. For some couples, cheating is like a pastime. They literally cheat every weekend, every four days, every week, every month, every time. For some couples, fighting is normal. Breaking up and getting back together is normal. So if you're in the category or bubble or cultural background in which cheating is just normal, you might not think anything of it. But I do not come from a bubble or a cultural background where cheating is acceptable. It does happen. It is assumed to happen with bad couples. Like in when I was growing up, if someone cheated, it was because they were a bad couple, like a toxic couple. Uh, couples that have cheating in them are not seen as couples that you want to mimic or admire or, you know, look to as like, oh, that's a good couple. So again, depending on your background, you might look at a couple who cheats and thinks like, yeah, everybody cheats. So remember, what you know about the world and what I know about the world will be different. So I wrote down, um, there are couples who feel stuck in their relationships. They feel like, hey, I really just want something for my partner they're not giving me. And because I feel trapped, I'm going to cheat. Or someone might feel like they're being abused. My partner is hurting me and I feel trapped and gaslit and I just want someone to love me and to hold me. This is still cheating, which is why when you're identifying as a consciousness, as an individual, and you say to yourself, like, I have values, 
these values have to exist outside of you being in a partnership. You can't switch your values up unless you're in a survival situation, which means you're probably in an unhealthy situation, right? If you're like in a living privileged situation where you think you're smart and wonderful and a good person, then cheating, right, can't be a part of your formula because cheating means you're betraying something you said you wouldn't do. Cheating can exist if you never made the promise not to cheat, right? So cheating can only exist if you've already made a promise not to, which means that if you, I think, are an upstanding person, you can't cheat. I think you can have moments of weakness. I think you can have moments of toxicity. I think you can have moments of being unhealthy. But in that moment, being unhealthy and cheating doesn't justify and isn't justified just because you were being hurt, right? Two wrongs don't make a right. So you can be in a situation, and I understand that, where you're not getting your needs met and you feel like you should go outside the relationship to get them. Now, of course, if I was me and I am me and I would give you advice, I would say, here's a tool. Learn to get out of the relationship beforehand. Learn how to get out before. Here's here's a plan, okay? Because cheating makes it worse. It makes it harder. It looks bad in courts if you're doing something with kids in custody. It actually is a bad stain on your reputation because you're a liar. Like being a cheater is associated and connected to being a liar. You said you wouldn't cheat and you had. Now, some people feel like if you're in a static relationship where your needs aren't getting met or you're in an abusive situation, that the relationship is over just because of that alone. I think you need to have a distinct conversation about how the relationship is over. I think much like Rachel and Ross, assuming the relationship is on a pause or over is, is a mistake. You should talk about it because you might end up doing something you regret in in such a deep and like um, such a deep and profound way that it might haunt you for the rest of your life or it might change the trajectory of your life or it might just make you a person you don't want to be. Like sometimes when I talk to people and I do calls or I talk to friends and family or just people in my life, you know, who come to me and say like, Brittany, I'm in the situation where I'm sleeping with a married man or sleeping with a married woman or I'm cheating on my wife or I'm cheating on my girlfriend or I'm cheating on my boyfriend. You know, the first thing I ask is why? And often people feel lonely. People just want to be seen. But then I ask them, what's it going to be like in your next relationship when you have to explain to someone, oh, yeah, I've done this before. When you are now in a category of people that have broken trust, that you're not sure now if you can even maintain trust, why should I trust somebody who's ever cheated? Why should I trust somebody in a relationship who's lenient on cheating? Now, I can trust them with lots of things, right? I can trust them with changing my tire. I can trust them with a, but maybe not with relationships, maybe not with my feelings. So again, when you've cheated, you're holding on to a reputation. You're not your past. You are your present. But if your present is currently connected to your past, like you're still in the moment, then you're still in the moment, right? So I think depending on your bubble and where you've come from, once a cheater, always a cheater. But see, I don't believe that for all people. I think some people are always a cheater, right? Once a cheater, always a cheater. I think for other people, they were just in a really bad moment. But they themselves have to really see the cheating as a horrible decision that they made, right? Kind of like stealing or, you know, hurting somebody unnecessarily, like really maliciously, like breaking a really big faux pas, right? You have to, in order to be a changed person, understand why that thing was even bad in the first place. But if you are somebody who's cheated, and doesn't really think it was that big of a deal, then like once a cheater, always a cheater. You're always gonna be susceptible to the temptation, and so I'm not gonna mess with you. So remember, you can be different kinds of people. You can be a person who's cheated, who will never cheat again. You can have a situation where you're cheating because you're malicious, you're gaslighting, your partner comes to you and says, hey, I've really been worried about you, you seem a little off, things look weird, Um, I just wanna make sure you're okay, and you're like, I'm fine, everything's great, there's nothing to worry about. But secretly, you are going behind their back. Secretly, you are cheating with somebody else. Secretly, you are betraying them. Your partner, the person who I'm assuming trusts you and you're vulnerable with you and loves you, right, is expecting you to be honest with them. And the fact that you aren't being honest with them, I think, is cruel and malicious when you know that they are doing their best to hear you, when you know they really want to hear from you, they really want to love you, they really are willing to do what it takes, and you're still cheating And listen, I know these people, I've helped these people, and I know it's all a journey, and I think you can come back from it. But I've helped too many people who say, I know what I'm doing is wrong, I can't believe I'm doing this to them, this is 100% awful, I feel so bad, and I see the remorse in their bodies, I see it in their faces, I see it in their spirits, but they might be addicted to the cheating, they might be addicted to the sneaking around, they might be too afraid to admit out loud what they've done, they're too afraid to break their partner's heart 
but they've already sunk too deep. But you can get out of that. Those are actually the perfect people, people who really feel remorse, who can get out of the cheating streak. But I think people who don't feel remorse, people who are looking at their partners and saying like, yeah, but I got to do this, man. Like, she doesn't understand me. He doesn't understand me. I got to do it. Why can't I do it? I'm not going to be told what to do. People who double down on their cheating, again, red flag. Okay. Um, what is cheating, right? Just to reiterate, it is lying or connected to lying. It overlaps with lying. But it is a betrayal of you, your values, your word. Like, when I grew up, there was a sense of your your word is your bound, bond. Your, your word is your character, your sense of characters, your, you know, sense of reputation, your idea of what a good man is and what a good woman is, is based off your reputation. And so I know that shifts and changes with bubbles. So some bubbles might not think less of you for cheating. But in my bubble, I do think less of you for cheating, right? I don't think less of you, period, all the time, permanent. I think, again, you can go from being a cheater to not being a cheater. I even think people cheat because of mental health. I think people have mental breakdowns and then they end up doing something really bad, which again is why I am open to recovery. I think people have mental breakdowns and they hit people. I think they drive drunk and kill people. I think people have really horrible moments in their life, but I think you can come back from them. But you have to know what you did was wrong in the first place, right? So I would like to see a world ideally where we come back from our bad mistakes, where we come back from our bad actions, where we come back from our bad choices. I would like to see a world where redemption is a part of our narrative. But again, it can't be a part of the narrative if you're going to double down and say, you know, I was just crazy for that moment, or you don't even know how hard it was, or I was being abused. Yeah, we can all create excuses for bad behavior, but explanations are better and solutions are even greater, right? We want solutions. So I understand you're in pain, but people in pain do awful things to people. And hurt people hurt people, but that's not a good excuse. You get no excuses from me. Only explanations, which allow a path for redemption. If you make an excuse, that is not a path to redemption. If you give an explanation and then seek redemption, great. That's what I want, right? So to figure out what story is your story, right? What anime are you in? Which version of cheating are you in? I'll give you a little bit of insight into mine. Mine was really complicated and there was a lot of layers to it. So I'll keep it pretty simple. I was in love with a person whose potential I was dating. I was in love with an idea of a person that I thought my partner would grow into. Now, along the relationship, we were on again and off again. Super red flag, right? We were really young in our mid to late 20s during the relationship, but we had the adolescent attitude about our life really ingrained in us, right? We were going out to the dungeons every night. We were hanging out with friends. We were like working hard. We had like two, to, well, I had two to three jobs and he was trying to maintain a work but really couldn't. But we weren't really living for like a real grand future, right? I also had undiagnosed mental illnesses that I eventually got diagnosed and got help for. And then he was in the prog process of also trying to get some sort of help but never really could see it through. So there were a lot of layers of problems, right? And in this relationship, I asked myself, like, is this what I want? And at one point in the relationship, I found out he was sleeping with somebody else and ended the relationship. Now me and my foolishness came back into that relationship hoping to help him and this girl thinking that I could, I don't know, set things straight, fix them, take them to therapy, only to discover that not only was she purposely in our lives because she ended up being a stalker, which many of you guys know this story, crazy, crazy story. Like none of us had an idea what was happening until it all blew up. But even if she wasn't a stalker, even if she was just some woman, I would have been opening open to helping both of them because I don't think once you're a cheater, you're always a cheater. I don't think the men and women, the good men and women that I know who fall into this problem are trapped there forever. So why would I think that about a man that I was hoping to marry, maybe, and a girl that I just kind of knew around town, right? But the truth was is that in hindsight, if I looked at the situation, I would have seen toxic flag after toxic flag after toxic flag, but I was too in it. I was a part of the problem. I let them get away with their excuses. I let myself get away with excuses. Oh, you don't understand. He's just sick. You don't understand. He needs therapy. You don't understand. People in my life tried to warn me. They tried to say, hey, I don't think he's a good person. I think you're having problems with him. I think you're always sad when you're with him. I feel like you should leave the situation. But I was young. 
And I was really, really, really naive to how much I needed to work on from like on my own for of myself. Now, when I officially ended that relationship and moved completely on, I went three years without a relationship. I did a couple first dates. I did a lot of meditation. I discovered a lot about myself. Now, if you asked me, how did I process being cheated on? To be honest with you, because I'm a YouTuber, there are so many videos, or there were, a lot of them are private now, videos of me on the internet expressing honestly how much anger and hurt I felt. Hindsight is absolutely 2020, and to be honest with you, you know, the last three or four years through all this like meditation and introspection, I've let go of all of that anger, but it wasn't easy. It wasn't quick. It wasn't overnight. And it was quite painful. To be honest with you, I think I felt mostly disappointed in myself for going back. And I felt disappointed that I didn't pick somebody that was kind. I didn't have a happy relationship. I had moments that were really happy. I had moments that were really lovely. But to be honest with you, it wasn't a healthy relationship. And so I think I allowed myself to end up in one of those toxic relationships that I grew up hearing about and I thought I would never be in. And then when I found out that I was in one, I think it just became such a devastating reality like, oh my gosh. I had fallen into the trap of ending up in a toxic relationship and that was pretty devastating. But I think as a, you know, as a person, when I go back and look at my YouTube videos now or those private videos now, I have sort of like this gateway into my actual lived history, which is really hard to watch. And honestly, I I don't really watch them, (laughs) to be honest, because it's kind of embarrassing. But this was like a real person. She did real things. She felt real things. And she had to learn to process. She had to learn to accept that she herself was toxic and made a decision to be in a toxic relationship and justify it. That she herself had people around her who loved her, who tried to encourage her out of this relationship, and she shut them down. She was a person who used to be a version of me. Obviously, I'm a completely different person now, and I know for a fact I am because I don't repeat patterns, and I 100% 100 broke that cycle of ending up in toxic relationships, and now that I'm in a healthy one, it's just without a doubt like the best decision I ever made was to grow up, was to pick healthy, was to stop making excuses for bad behavior. And then I ended up in my current relationship, which is my perfect relationship, right? The relationship with this perfect person and not perfect because everything about them is exactly 1000% what I dreamed of, but that the key things are. The key things are values, how we see the world, the way we're introspective and extrospect, all of that lines up, including how they feel about cheating. My partner has a very, a very similar passionate opinion about cheating. They understand, he understands that other people cheat, he gets it, but when it comes to us, Okay, there's like little to no understanding about it because we decided in our relationship when we negotiated, when we did court style dating, we courted each other, right? We were very serious about cohabitation, about marriage, lifelong partnership. We put down as things that are considered abuse and cheating we made our list. So hitting, uh, verbally abusing, um, stealing all the money, financial fidelity, infidelity, um, sexual infidelity, emotional infidelity, seeking out comfort about our relationship or intimate moments in other people that weren't our spouses when our spouse should come first. All of that is considered abuse in our eyes. So we tried really hard to make sure that we made a list prior to full commitment to make sure that when we committed, it made sense to us. Now, for other people, that's too much. That doesn't make sense to them. They don't understand. For for him and I, though, I think it makes a lot of sense that we would have done this because we're both pretty much homebodies. We're relatively private. At least I'm much more private now, obviously, than I've been in the past. Huge mistake, huge red flag was that I would talk a little bit too much about my relationships in the past. And now I'm much more private. But we are people who confide in one another. We're people who see the world similarly. We're people who want to do world as a, like the world as a team. Like we want to tackle the world as a team. So being cheated on would be a huge boundary cross. Like, oh my gosh, not only are we very serious about not cheating, we're very serious about not kissing anyone, not cuddling anyone, not being like very intimately uh, affectionate with a lot of people. Like there are some rules because, you know, queer and like we're very progressive. So there are some leeways of what we would be okay with. Like we're okay with porn. We're okay with vibrators and using adult toys. We're okay with expressing interest in other people as a sexual entity. We're okay with acknowledging that people are pretty or handsome. We're both okay with openly talking about like, hey, I think they're attractive. Do you think they're attractive? We're okay with all of that. 
because there's no threat to the relationship to acknowledge another human being is beautiful, right? But I would never overstep those boundaries by kissing somebody that wasn't him, um, being intimate with somebody that wasn't him, and vice versa. So we have our boundaries. We also have financial responsibility to one another too because cheating, often associated with sexual infidelity, which makes sense, also is and can be like financial infidelity, right? Trust, again, is the thing that's being betrayed, right? Trust is the thing that's being shattered. It's not just about being physical with somebody else. It's also about saying to your partner, I love you. I'm going to keep you safe. Thank you for trusting me. And then shattering that trust by draining the bank account and spending it on something that's not important or draining the bank account without telling them or, you know, even right this second, okay, He's going to the store to do grocery shopping for us. And I'm the primary breadwinner and we share money and we share life together and we share the the troubles of life together. But if he went to the store right now and spent $1,000, which is way above, uh, above grocery budget, right? I would consider that very, very abnormal. And I would say, hi, are you having a stroke? Why did you do that? And he would have to have a very good reason, right? Otherwise, it would be virtually insane because he's sane and a sane person in the relationship I'm in with him wouldn't do that. We wouldn't overspend our grocery budget by a thousand dollars, right? So again, for some people, they do that in their relationships. They have a lack of communication. They feel constantly unnerved and shaken by their partners. They feel constantly worried like, oh, is my partner going to spend $1,000 today? Is my partner going to think of us financially? Is my partner going to think of me sexually? Is my partner... We want to reduce harm, harm reduce, right? We want to comfort each other through this process. And we want to, by action, show each other that we can be trusted. And so if any of us cheated, it would be a break of that trust. Now you might say, Brittany, you sound awfully confident. Why are you so confident right now? Don't you think you might run into temptation Okay, hear me out. You agree. I sound really confident right now, right? How do you think my partner would feel if I sounded this confident, got on the internet, told everybody my reputation, and then I cheated? Do you see how that could be malicious? Name a situation in which I am this confident. I am saying it to the world. I would never cheat. What are you talking about? Only to find out that in the future I cheated? How malicious would that be? Would that not crush my partner? Would that not embarrass them? Would that not embarrass my reputation? Would you guys not be shocked? Tell me right now in the comment sections. Would you not be shooketh if I cheated? Because I would be shooketh. I would be like, who is she? What is happening? Because I am so confident in my ability not to cheat. Now, I've never cheated. So I've gone 34 years. (laughs) And I've also been, it's not that I haven't been offered, um, opportunities. It's just that I don't see them as interesting, which is probably maybe that's a maybe that's a thing with me. Maybe that's my superpower is like I'm not tempted by others. When I'm in a relationship, I'm pretty focused on my partner and my partner's also Demi. So like when we have a relationship, we're really in love with like the consciousness. You know what I mean? I'm not Demi. I'm Aloe, but I'm still very in love with the people I'm in love with. So I just like hyper focus on that person. And I'm not even tempted by other people because no one is as interesting as my partner, right? No one is, I'm not in love with you guys. I'm in love with my con- the consciousness that is my partner. So to cheat on them, to cheat on him would be so weird because I'm basically trading down. There was, I found the most perfect consciousness. And even when I was in my last few relationships and none of them were perfect, I was willing to work hard enough to make sure before I broke up with them that they weren't perfect, that we couldn't get to perfect, that we couldn't work our hardest to make it perfect, right? Because for me, perfect means finding someone who shares my values and won't force me to betray them and won't be somebody who's so different than my values that when I'm with them, they make me feel gross. I think sometimes in relationships like I did in my past relationships, I would date people who had very different values than me. And I would say to myself, well, they're an independent person and I'm an independent person. But I genuinely don't want to marry somebody that I don't share values with because let me give you an example. Let's say, okay, I'm anti, like, um, in a living situation, I understand surviving, so I'm not, okay. I've definitely stolen food to survive, right? When I was in my 20s and I had no money in my accounts and I was working and I was, I didn't, I was a mess, okay? I fully accept that I was a mess and I would steal food from the deli. Like, I would steal, um, like, chicken salad sample 
like samples. I would steal like a little piece of chicken here and there. I would steal like I'm just fully going to say that. Right. And that's pretty common in Delhi culture for people to steal the food. But I was genuinely starving. OK. And um, too prideful to ask for help because it was too embarrassing, which was a mistake. That was a mistake. Now, once I got healthy, I went to therapy and I stopped surviving. Obviously, I'm super anti stealing. Right. Why would I steal food? I make good money. Like, why would I do that? Right. I can understand why somebody else in a bad situation would do it. But why would Brittany do it? Now, if I'm dating somebody who's in a good living situation like I am and they're kind of a kleptomaniac, they just like to steal things, that would be super anti my values. So see how I'm able to hold an understanding for somebody in a survival situation, but in a privileged living situation, that's just kind of an issue. Why are you stealing things when you have the money to pay for them? Why are you stealing things that aren't about survival, right? Why are you doing, why are you taking from someone, someone's stuff? When it, it can't even be justified or understood. I cannot understand why you would do this. That is where I draw the line. I can't be with a person who doesn't share my values, who wouldn't act according to good character based off of how I feel a good character is. So again, in a survival situation, you would lie if the Nazis were at your door asking you if you were hiding any Jews. You would say no. You would lie to the Nazis. But in a, in a living situation, sorry, in a living situation, if somebody says, hi, do you have herpes? You would say yes if you had herpes because you don't want to spread STIs, right? But in a survival situation where maybe they were killing people with herpes, maybe you would lie, right, to save your life. It's like in life, we're going to be given opportunities to say yes to temptation or no to temptation. We're going to be given opportunities to die for our values or not die for our values. We're going to be given opportunities and we're going to have these like crossroads like this this cross on the road where we have to make a decision about what kind of person am I going to be in this moment of time? I think we're all living in moments of time and some moments last longer than others. There's this part of the internet that is so anti-cheating. Like a lot of people on my video about cheating were just like so in agreement with me. And then some people really weren't. Thought I was too harsh, thought I didn't understand my passion. They think I'm still not processing the cheating because I'm so angry about it. I'm still very angry about a lot of things. I am angry about injustice. I'm angry when people hurt each other. I'm angry when people hurt people and double down. It upsets me right? Because I do think there's a right and a wrong. I just think my values might not be universal, but for me, they are law, right? In a living situation, I have to adhere to the highest standard of my values. Meaning when temptation comes up and given the opportunity to do good, I should do good. I don't want to do bad. And I don't think you can justify to me cheating in most situations. And again, I, Brittany, don't think you should cheat if you're being abused, okay? But I understand how you could be so mentally bogged down, so physically abused, so in a bad situation, you feel like cheating is your only way out. I understand that. I've met, like I said, I've met a bunch of people. I've talked to a bunch of people who are definitely mentally going through it and they end up doing these horrible things, but it's still pretty bad and you're definitely hurting some people. I saw a story on TikTok Oh, no, 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 I take that back. I saw a story on H3H3. H3. Oh, about um, Ariana Grande. I'm going to cover that soon. Um, I'm really excited to cover the Ariana Grande story because, again, infidelity is very interesting to me. But Ethan and Hila were like, I can't believe she did this. I can't believe she did this to another woman. I know so many women that are sleeping with married people, married people with kids. And these women, I frankly do feel, are like mentally unstable. And that's not an excuse. They don't get that excuse. What they're doing is really bad. It's really bad. But the problem is I can't force them to stop. And the people in those relationships, well, they're going to have to eventually either be outed or someone's going to have to tell them or, I mean, if the wife is in front of me, I'm going to tell a girl, right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look out for a sister. But at the same time, and I would tell, like, again, if somebody's cheating on you and I'm within your, I'm access, you're accessible to me, like you're in front of me, I will probably tell you. And at the same time, maybe they have a don't ask, don't tell policy. I wonder that sometimes. I meet these couples who are like, oh, I don't want to know if he's cheating. And I'm like, what do you mean? They're like, I don't want to know. If he's cheating, he's cheating, but I don't want to know. And I'm like, oh. so sometimes as the person who knows stuff, because, you know, y'all tell me so much, you know what I'm saying? These people out here are cheating. I never know if I should go tell people. Because maybe they don't want to know. 
But ultimately, usually I go with my instinct and my gut about when I should tell people like, hey, you're being cheated on or hey, this thing is happening. I'm not going to lie that one of my parts of TikTok that I love the most is when people are like, hey, if your name is Brianna, your guy is on this like on the bus talking about how he's going to sleep with Ashley. And like, I like that. I think you should out cheaters. And at the same time, it's not for this. It's not because we want to like bully the cheater. It's because we want to help the victim being cheated on. If you're not going to tell your wife you're cheating on her, then I will. If you're not going to tell your boyfriend, if you're not going to tell, if the person they trust the most can't even tell them, what good are you, right? I get that the subject is nuanced and it's definitely, definitely layered. So I don't want to say there's a black and white solution, but I do want to say that I'm very confident that you'll never be able to justify to me that infidelity is okay right? Now, one caveat to this conversation that I think I should bring up because people get really bratty about it is they'll say things like, well, what if you're assaulted? Is that infidelity? Obviously, if you're in a relationship where your partner thinks you getting assaulted is infidelity, you should divorce that person because that's insane. It is insane to say that my wife or husband committed infidelity, cheated on me because they were assaulted. That is certifiably insane. You should be locked up, right? I think that is a type of person. I've met those kinds of people, or at least I've heard about those kinds of people through other people. And I just think that's just absolutely insane, right? So certifiably insane. I've met some people who I also think are certifiably insane when, and I don't mean that literally, I'm being like very facetious, but who say things like, um, Like if you're married to somebody and your partner disappears and you go get with somebody else, right, then you're cheating on them because you never got confirmation or an official divorce letter or something like that. But let me talk to you about this. So my partner and I have a negotiation. We have an agreement that if either of us ever disappears, okay, let's say the police think I've been kidnapped or murdered or, you know, missing women's cases happen, missing boys' cases, men's cases happen. What if my husband disappears? What if I disappear? Okay. We have a rule that we would wait five years before assuming the relationship is over. Because again, in five years, we could learn a lot about a missing persons case. You know what I'm saying? There's oh, There are always people showing up after three, four, five years. And I just want to make sure before I move on that my person wasn't just kidnapped temporarily. And I know that's outrageous because you're thinking, who's that going to happen to? I don't know. It happens. I don't want to run the risk of assuming my partner is gone just because they've disappeared, right? There was that movie Brothers with Jake Gyllenhaal and um, Tobey Maguire, and that happened, right, where Tobey Maguire is in, uh, I think, Afghanistan or something, and he disappears, and they think he's dead. The military says he's dead. And years later, the wife's moved on with the brother, only to have Tobey Maguire come back. And I think there's something to be said about situations like that where I'd be very worried that my person is just a POW or my person is just gone for a second. And I know that obviously no one's at fault for getting like the woman in the story isn't at fault for moving on. She was told he was dead. Right. So in my opinion, that's not infidelity. It's moving on. You think he's dead. But I can understand how there would be hurt there with him coming back and saying you didn't wait for me. I also think you should talk about this preemptively and say, what's the waiting period? Because I feel like five years is more than reasonable to wait. It even might be too generous to some people. But you know, what's five years of my life, okay? So for me, when I'm thinking about infidelity, I'm thinking about the the pain that it causes, right? I've told so many stories on this channel about so many versions of infidelity. But ultimately, we should want our partners to be joyful and happy and healthy and kind. We should want our relationships to be those things. So yes, people will have moments of mental health and survive, like surviving. They'll have moments of doing things that are really bad because they're sick. I don't think that justifies it. It just explains it. So yes, you did something bad. You can't double down and say, well, I, I was in an episode. Oh, well, um, I was drunk that night. Oh, well, I was, yeah, yeah, I understand, right? What you could say is, here's my explanation. I'm very sorry. It was not my conscientious decision. I did not make this decision with my full consciousness. I was impaired, but I still did the thing and I would like to pay amends for the thing that I've done, right? I acknowledge the pain that I've caused. So again, when we're talking about infidelity, we're talking about breaking a trust. So how do you process cheating? You First, in my opinion, 
figure out what category you're in, what's your story, and then you have a different relationship with it. If I was cheated on when I was a teenager, I think I'd get over that pretty quick, if I'm going to be honest with you. People are young. Their brains aren't developed. It's, it is what it is. They don't know any better. I think if I was cheated on after five, ten years in a relationship by somebody I truly trusted and loved, I would be devastated, but I would be like, humans are going to human, right? Now, in my relationship, I was pretty lucky because even though I was really upset I was cheated on, I also knew he wasn't ready to be my husband. So I think it was easier for me to get over it. Like it only took so long, right? And I don't assume everyone's going to cheat. I'm okay dating males. I'm not sitting here thinking all men cheat. That's not true. Absolutely not true. Not all men cheat, right? Not all women cheat. I don't think all people cheat. I don't think cheating is like very as common as it appears in my opinion, but maybe it is. I don't know. Maybe I am an anomaly. But I I think that my relationship was really lucky because we didn't have kids. We weren't married. I wasn't committed to him fully because we were still on the rocks, right? And he wasn't committed to me fully. We were just very much trying to have this relationship. And he decided to cheat, which was within his right. And it was within my right to leave. It was within my right to come back. It was within my right to try again. It was foolish and it was silly. And I don't really recommend it. But I know it can work for some couples. Some people feel like Beyonce and Jay-Z made their cheating and fidelity work after, right? They felt like they worked on their relationship. Some people feel like they're only in a relationship for business. I personally would not want to maintain a relationship with someone who's cheated on me at this point in my life, but I can understand why people make that decision. Even my current partner right now, my forever partner, Um, Them and I talk about it all the time. If one of us has a breakdown, mental illness, I have a borderline episode, I have a PTSD trigger and I cheat, it's still infidelity. It's not abusive in the same way because I'm probably in a state of mind where I'm not uh, a person. But at the same time, he might not be able to cope with it. It might be too much of a betrayal for him to get over. So we might even stay married, but not have a life together. We might even, we're open to any of the possibilities because in that state of mind, there's some sort of um, nuance that needs to be considered, right? And at the same time, him and I work really hard not to get triggered. It's our responsibility to maintain our mental health. We do not become intoxicated heavily in public. We work really hard to be responsible because again, in order for me to get to the point where I'm having a mental breakdown and I'm cheating, so many things would have to go wrong. Like 79 million things would have to go wrong for that to happen, right? So that is, I I think people misunderstand how hard it is for somebody in my position to cheat because I never leave the house. I'm always with my partner. I'm always working and I'm always working on the internet. I don't see people. In order for Brittany to see someone physically that she could cheat with, it would take so much effort. I don't like people. I don't see them. And even online to have a romantic relationship with somebody would be so hard for me because I'm working all the time. And I am very black and white with the way that I am, which is why I always put a stand, like I make it clear to people in my life, like, hey, if you ever make a pass at me while I'm in this committed relationship with rings on my finger, especially, like end of the friendship, end of friendship, end of friendship. And I know people think that's crazy, but I will go to lengths to maintain the health of my marriage right? Okay. I will go to lengths to maintain the health of my relationship. And I think of it as a marriage. We're not even legally married yet, right? But that's how I think, how strongly I'm thinking about this relationship. Like, this is it. I've made the decision. This is my person. Even if I had a bestie, especially if I had a bestie, I would hold them to higher standards. And they made a pass at me when they know I'm this committed. You're dead to me. Sleep with the fishes. Dead to me. We'd have to go to the mattresses. <laughs> Those are Godfather references. Anyways, you know what I mean? I am not taking the love of my life uh, lightly. I did not work this hard to meet this person just to cheat on them. And that's why I do kind of doubt sometimes that if you're willing to cheat in your relationship, that you have earned the right to have a good one or that you've earned the right to be even in one in the first place. I think sometimes if you're in the state of mind where you're willing to cheat or sleep with somebody who's married, I think that's just proof that you're not ready to be in a healthy, happy, kind relationship. I think you're still on a journey and you should probably heal enough in yourself not to have to do those things 
before you really try to look for the person that you're going to be healthy and happy and kind with. You know, your stories are unique, though. Please share them down below. I'm sure some of you feel like your story went differently and what I'm saying doesn't make sense to you. So please let me know how you've made it work for yourself. I hope the person who wrote me this comment, I hope this video helped you. Remember that life is all about gathering tools. And the tools we gather will be based off of our openness and willingness, right, to have the real relationship with our consciousness. Are we willing to admit that I didn't have to go that far? Am I willing to admit I've hurt people? Am I willing to admit I've made the mistake? It falls on me. I'm the one who did this, right? I'm the one who kept going back to a bad relationship. I'm the one who kept trying to pick him, right? I'm the one who's picking this good relationship. And I'm not going to throw it away by making a bad decision in the future or in the present rather, right? I am doing this. I, Brittany, am picking this good, wonderful relationship. And I'm going to continue picking it every day by maintaining my health, my happiness, and the kindness within me. All right, guys. Thank you for watching. Have the most fantastic day. And I will see you guys next video. Bye. My belly's being fed and I'm okay I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine Not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense I've been nothing but blessed So why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth Life is a fool. Dun, 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 dun.